and uh, thank you for giving us this time to um, do our presentation. My name is Ted Von Lovich, and uh, this is Neil Mussel, uh, who will be joining me in the Q&A at the end of the presentation. And uh, we, we're here as concerned citizens and supporters of the Council of Canadians. Our purpose tonight is to speak about the Trans-Pacific uh, uh, Partnership, the TPT, and why municipalities should oppose it. Um, I'd like to begin the presentation with a four-minute video by U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren. What she states in this video is relevant and very applicable to Canada. TPP isn't about helping American workers set the rules. It's about letting giant corporations rig the rules on everything from patent protection to food safety standards, all to benefit themselves. Now, the first clue about who benefits from TPP is who actually wrote it. During the top secret drafting process, 28 trade advisory committees were formed to whisper in the ear of our trade negotiators. Who sat on those committees? 85% were senior corporate executives or industry lobbyists. And many of the committees, including those on chemicals and pharmaceuticals, aerospace equipment, textiles and clothing, and financial services, were 100% industry representatives. In more than half of all the advisory committees, no one, not one single person, was in the room who represented American workers or American consumers. You know, a rigged process produces a rigged outcome. Take a look at the Investor State Dispute Settlement, or ISDS. I, I know, sounds wonky, but this is the part that gives a huge boost to big multinational companies when they want to challenge a country's laws that they just don't like. Usually, they would have to go to a court. But with TPP, they can skip the courts and use industry-friendly arbitration panels staffed with corporate lawyers. And here's the deal. Whatever those panels say goes. No appeals anywhere. These fines can cost a country billions of dollars. And some countries will just back down and change their regulations instead of fighting back. Workers, environmentalists, human rights advocates, they don't get to use ISDS. It's only the big corporations that do. Now that is a rigged system. This isn't just speculation. This is real. Last year, a mining company won an ISDS case when Canada said the company couldn't blast off the coast of Nova Scotia. And now, today, taxpayers in Canada are on the hook for up to $300 million all because their government tried to protect its environment and the livelihood of its local fishermen. ISDS is also a problem right here at home. The Obama administration, applying American law, decided that the pipeline was a threat to our air, to our water, and to our climate. So what's happened? Well, now the Canadian corporation that wants to build this pipeline is using the ISDS provision in NAFTA to demand more than $15 billion in damages from the U.S. For what? For turning down the Keystone Pipeline. Look, everyone understands the risks of ISDS, even the people who wrote TPP. In fact, people got so worried about tobacco companies using ISDS that the TPP negotiators decided to say that tobacco companies can't use ISDS to roll back anti-smoking regulations. And look, I am really glad they did that. But it's pretty much an admission that ISDS can be used to weaken other public health laws. Think about it. What about food safety laws or drug safety laws or worker safety laws or environmental safety laws or any other regulations that are designed to protect our citizens? It will be open season on laws that make people safer but that cut into corporate profits. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, and uh, the reason why I chose her was that uh, she was very brief on this issue, but covered so many different bases. So we'd like to start from that and uh, uh, look at the issue of why municipalities should oppose the uh, TPP. If I can just get this go to full screen, please. Thank you. Uh, a, problem a problematic issue with the TPP negotiation was its secrecy. 
TPP negotiations began in 2009. Canada joined in 2012. All that was agreed on prior to 2012 was locked in. So as a latecomer, Canada had no right to change or modify or delete anything that was negotiated prior to their joining. <clears throat> in terms of transferring uh, of power, oops, yeah, sorry, this is the, uh, the first one. So the three points I'll cover, well, we already covered uh, what's wrong with the uh, TPP in the video, but uh, why municip uh, municipalities should be concerned and then the action request. Uh, a problematic issue with the TPP negotiation, as I said, was its secrecy. Uh, the TPP actually has uh, very little to do with uh, trade and the lowering of tariffs. In fact, 97% of the trade between the 11 participating countries is already largely tariff-free. Many trade experts unequivocally claim that it is not about free trade at all. The TPP is really about transferring more powers away from government. It's been described as a silent coup d'etat in slow motion, a sneak attack on democracy, and in the words of Joseph Stiglitz, the worst trade deal ever negotiated. Uh, with regard to the ISDS, the Investor State Dispute uh, Settlement, the question is, do we need the ISDS? Uh, well, free uh, trade researcher and documentary filmmaker Paul Manling doesn't think so. He supports his view by stating that we live in an established society, we have an established and advanced judicial uh, system, and if we are trading with countries that are undemocratic and lack a robust judicial system, then improving those systems should be part of the deal. And he concludes by saying, we should have our courts deciding on uh, trade disputes, not some private arbitration panel of corporate lawyers. Now, <clears throat> in terms of uh, municipal powers targeted, there's no doubt that municipalities will be adversely affected under a TPP regime. Article 15.24 of the agreement mandates that Canada is to begin negotiations to expand coverage, including sub-national governments, no later than three years after the deal has come into force. The threat to municipalities can be that foreign corporations could challenge local zoning laws and environmental laws, laws that protect environmentally sensitive areas or that encourage sustainable development, and a chill effect may cause many local governments to become hesitant in advancing legislation that reflects community core values for fears of lawsuits from ISDS claims. <clears throat> in terms of buying local, we all acknowledge that local goods and services are vital economic drivers. In this regard, the TPP will restrict the ability of local governments to encourage economic growth by procuring services from local companies. Favoring local could trigger ISD arbitration. Harmonization of food standards threatens to lower the quality of our food and eliminating supply management could spell disaster for our small and vibrant local agriculture. And as the esteemed Canadian whistleblower, Dr. Shiv Chopra uh, cautions, introducing RBGH milk, currently banned in Canada, will undermine the guarantee of healthy, safe milk and milk products. As for climate change, TPP touches on climate change really lightly. Their environmental rules are weak and lack specific obligations and enforcement. ISDS could be used uh, to undermine efforts to tackle climate change and force governments to compensate corporations for mitigation initiatives. ISDS has already been used to undermine efforts to create energy alternative policies of national and provincial governments. And uh, the Ontario Green Energy Act is just one example. Can you ground the conversation? Sure. Thank you. Okay. The Council of Canadians and many other groups here and in the United States have put out studies that show that trade deals like the TPP and their ISDS corporate lawsuits benefit very large corporations and individuals. So this leads to our final slide. The TPP will trade away our democracy and lock in privatization and corporate profits. But the encouraging news is that movements to oppose the TPP is growing in both Canada and the United States. So what we're asking you to do is to ask the federal government not to ratify this agreement. And finding two key points before I wrap up, 
The TPP is a recipe for undermining democratic uh, authority of this council, and as a council, you should have the authority to make decisions on behalf of the citizens that you represent. Thank you.